good morning <coughs> to this session after tea break. In this session, we will discuss on the rate of deformation of a fluid element in course of flow, which is very important and a distinguishing feature of the fluid kinematics. So, we come to this session and we will discuss on three important consequences of kinematics. One is translation, <coughs> another is deformation, two important thing, another is deformation. Now, what is translation and what is deformation in a fluid flow? Now, let us consider a fluid flowing in a medium where the velocity vector is totally constant. Just I told you earlier that it does not change. It is uniform in space coordinates. It may or may not change with time. Now, in that case what happens if the velocity is same, then a fluid element moves as a solid body. There is no relative velocity from of one particle with respect to the other since the fluid velocity is invariant with space coordinates. So, if fluid velocity ceases to be a function of space coordinates, all particles move with the same velocity. And in that case, if you identify a fluid element, we will see that its dimension remains unchanged. It is simply translated from one position to another position as a solid particle does. And we show it by an by a figure you see here. <coughs> This is a picture of fluid translation. You see that if you take a fluid element as a parallel pipette with the dimension of a del x del y del z with reference to a Cartesian coordinate system and if the velocity vector is constant is not a function of x y z with respect to space coordinates, then the element translates simply depending upon the velocity vector, but its dimension del x del y del z and the included angle between the surfaces remains as it is. That means, this fluid elements moves like a rigid body. This is known as pure translation. Now, you come to a case of deformation. Okay. Now, what is deformation? Let me explain the deformation very clearly. Now, let us for our better understanding consider a case with two dimensions. That means, a two dimensional case in a frame of reference x y Cartesian frame of reference. And we consider the velocity u in the x direction and v in the y direction is such that u the x component of velocity or x direction velocity is a function of x coordinate only. And the y component of velocity v is a function of y coordinate only. Let us consider a special case. Then what happens? Let us understand. And we first identify a element rectangular element of fluid. We identify a rectangular element of fluid a b C D of length delta x in the x direction and the linear dimension dimension of A D delta y in the y direction del x del y length and rectangular element. Now, try to understand one thing u is a function of x which means that if we take different particles on this linear dimension A B or the line element A B since u is a function of x each and every particle or a on this line moves with a velocity different from the other. If we consider in general u increases with x and v increases with y then what happens here the x component of velocity of a particle is higher than the particle before it which means the particle b the point b has a higher u component x component of velocity u with respect to A. And because of this, 
what happens there is a stretching of the element b a b because of this u being a function of x and each particle moves with higher u component x component of velocity u that means there is a stretching of this line a b but at the same time what happens u v is a function of y that means similar way the linear element a d if we consider different parti particles then we see v increases with y this particle has a higher y component of velocity with relative to this this particle has a higher y component of velocity relative to this this com this particle at d or this point has a higher velocity y component velocity relative to a which means which gives a stretching of this linear dimension ad as it as the element moves this is one issue now we will consider another thing that what about the y component of velocity of each particle on the linear element ab now you see that y component of velocity is not a function of x is a function of y only this we have taken as a very special case if this is so that means all the particles here on the linear element ab which do not vary in their y position but in x position have the same y component of velocity because v is not a function of x that means the line ab moves parallel in the similar way all the particles on ad moves with the same u component of velocity because u is not a function of y is a function of x and all the particles in the linear element ad varies in their location with y but they have a, they have the same x coordinate so therefore the u component of velocity is same because u is not a <coughs> function of y which means this linear element ad moves parallel this has a stretching but moving parallel ab stretches but moves parallel which means the included angle remains same that means this element does not change its shape from the rectangular one but the side the linear elements stretched so with this background let us have this thing here at some interval of time delta t we consider this has reached this location and has taken the shape or the dimension a dash b dash c dash d dash that means it is maintaining the rectangular shape because a b moves parallel to a dash b dash but with a stretching a d moves parallel to a dash d dash but with a stretching in the y direction similarly the other linear elements so the included angle remains the same and the rectangular shape remains the same now let us find out this length what is the stretching now if we define the velocity component u and v at the point a okay then we see that the displacement of a if we see the displacement of a here from a if we draw a line here the displacement of a will be after a time delta t i have told that it takes time delta t this element to move here this a has a displacement u into delta t well now if you see the displacement of b what is the displacement of b now b has a velocity which is different from u that velocity of b is u plus del u del x into del x neglecting the higher order term the velocity of b will be u plus since u is a function of x the change in u for a change in x location by delta x del u del x delta x neglecting the higher order term so this will be the velocity of b u component that is x component u velocity of b so b will move therefore to a distance which is given by which is given by u plus del u del x into del x so this is the velocity u plus del u del x del x times delta t clear similar is the case in the y direction if you see the y direction you will see that this will move to a this a will move to a dash since this is a 
velocity v y component here you are defining u v. So, this is v delta t whereas, the point d has a velocity y component of velocity which is not same as a because v is a function of y as I have told this velocity is v plus change in v for a distance of del y and neglecting the higher order term del v del y del y. So, therefore, d will have a displacement that means in y direction which is this one which is this one which will be v plus del v del y del y this is the velocity times the time. So, from this we can find out the rate of elongation. Now, find out or the elongation first what is this elongated length a dash b dash. Now, a dash b dash can be written as what a dash b dash can be written as a b just follow the geometry a b a b plus b b dash a b plus b b dash that means this distance a b plus b b dash minus a a dash minus a simple geometry minus a a dash that means a b plus b b dash that means this distance minus a a dash. So, now if I do this a b is del x now b b dash already is u plus del u del x del x to del t minus a a dash which is minus u delta t. Now, what happens u delta t and this u cancels that means, this becomes equal to this becomes equal to del x you see plus del u del x del x delta t del x plus del u del x del x delta t. I show it here. So, this will be more clear. So, this will be so this length will be del x plus del u del x del x delta t that means, del x plus del u del x del x delta t. So, if I put the original length that means, if I show here the original dimensions that a b c d that means, this was delta x the original length of the linear element a b. So, therefore, this elongation this elongation this elongation becomes what this minus del x that means, this is the elongation del u del x del x delta t. So, this is the elongation in linear element a b that means, elongation of a b elongation of a b of a b is equal to del u del x del x del t this is the elongation of a b. Now, similarly if you want to find out that of a d that means, first of all I have to find out a dash d dash a dash d dash is similarly d dash d d a that means, I start from here a d plus d d dash you just follow it d d dash that means, a d plus d d dash that means, this one minus this one that means, a a dash this a a dash is in the y direction a a dash not this a a dash which means, this will be equal to a d is del y d d dash will be v plus del v del y del y into delta t d d dash minus a a dash in the vertical direction vertical displacement that means, minus v delta t. Now, this v delta t and this cancels. So, therefore, this becomes equal to del y plus this quantity del v del y 
del y del t. That means, the elongated length in the element a d parallel to y axis that is a dash d dash is this. That means, this length is therefore, this length is therefore, v plus del v del y v plus del v del y del y del t v no sorry del y plus del v del y del y plus del v del y del y del t. That means, the elongation this part is simply this is del y this is del y. So, elongation will be del v del y del y del t. Elongation in x direction b b dash was del u del x del x del t. Elongation in the y direction is del v del y del y del t. That means, we can write in the similar way elongation elongation the y direction that means, the element a d is now del v del y del y del t. That means, this is the elongation in the x direction, this is the elongation in the x direction and this is the elongation the y direction that is elongation of the element a b elongation in the element a d. Now, if we define strain as you know is elongation per original length that means, if you define a strain epsilon x in x direction as elongation of the linear element in the x direction divided by its original length, then what will be that del u del x already we have found this del x del t divided by del x the original length. So, this is the elongation. Now, if we find out if we now do that limit of this strain by delta t as delta t tends to 0, this that is the rate of strain linear strain that is strain by delta t time interval delta t tends to 0, which is defined as delta x dot and linear strain rate in x direction. This is simply del u del x, because delta t comes here. So, it is free from delta t, this is del u del x. In the similar way, we can define that this strain in the y direction is the elongation change in the dimension del y del t divided by the original length and accordingly the rate of strain or strain rate in the y direction by definition epsilon y by delta t and delta t tends to 0 becomes del v del y. So, therefore, we see that this equals to uh, epsilon sorry this here somewhere epsilon y dot equals to this. So, therefore, we see that epsilon x dot again I write is del u del x everything I am not writing I am telling that this is the rate of linear strain in x direction. Similarly, the rate of linear strain in y direction is del v del y and if we do it for a three dimensional case that means, in z direction also similar way we will get this. That means, the essence is that in a flow field in a three dimensional flow field if we have u v and w component of velocity respectively as u x component y component z component u v w such that the x component of velocity is a function of x only, y component of velocity is a function of y only and z component of velocity is a function of z only, then a fluid element if we consider in this case a parallelopiped like this, then the fluid element moves without any change in the included angle all the faces move parallelly, but only thing is that the linear dimensions del x, this linear dimension del y and this linear dimension del z gets stretched and this stretching is expressed in terms of the linear strain rate. That means, the elongation per unit length per unit time 
that is the rate in x direction is the velocity gradient of u with x in the y direction strain rate linear strain rate in y direction is the velocity gradient of y component with y del v del y and similarly epsilon del z is del w del z. Now, I will show you one thing that because of this thing the total volume gets changed. You see a picture now where you see because of this as I have just explained the linear element in x, y and z direction have elongated and ultimately this gives a change in volume. Now, how to find out the change in volume and how to define the volumetric strain rate? It is very simple. Initial volume was delta x with respect to that figure delta z and what is the final volume and let us consider the volume changes delta v. So, final volume will be delta x into 1 plus this is the x dimension del u del x del x delta t we have already done it this is the elongation total length in the x direction elongated length this is the elongation in the x direction into y direction the elongated dimension in the y direction is 1 plus del v del y into del y delta t and similarly the elongated dimension in the z direction 1 plus del w del z into del z delta t. Now, if I find out what is the change in the volume that means, I have to take v this side v is minus del x del y del z that means, I have to make del x minus del x del y del z and if we do so, then with some algebraic del x del y del z into minus del x del y del z that del x del y del z will cancel. So, del x del y del z will be multiplied with that and we will get this thing as minus uh, 1 plus del u del x. Well, uh, del v will be minus this is ok del x del y del z that means, this is del x del y del z plus no there is some mistake I think what is that that is ok that v plus del v is del x into 1 plus del u del x del x del t then v plus then del v is del x del y del z. So, we can get I am sorry del v is then what is this del u del x this is del x into sorry there is a mistake del u there will be no del x there will be no del u ok I am sorry there will there is a mistake ok. So, therefore, this will be del x into del x del y del z del x del y del z into 1 plus del u del x delta t into 1 plus del v I am sorry that is why there were this is a inadvertent mistake into 1 plus del w del z delta t minus del x del y del z. So, now if you make the limit delta v del t at del t tends to 0 divided by the original volume v as the definition of this can be written as 1 by v dv this v is the volume with a cut I am dv the cut dv dt this is defined as the rate of volumetric dilation if you do it and neglect the higher order term this will become del u del x plus del v del y plus del w del z. Now, what is hap what happening that if you do a simple mathematics that del x del w del y del z you take common then 1 will be cancelled this 1 1 1 minus 1 then what will happen if you multiply with this this will be del u del x del t del v del y del t then del w del z del t and we can neglect the del t square term because when we will be divided by del t 
the del t square term will be del t term which within the limit will become 0. This I am not writing for the time constant. So, this is a simple algebra that if you do so that delta v divided by delta t if you divided by delta t this expression and take the limit then the term containing delta t will be vanished and ultimately you will land up with these three terms and this is known as the rate of volumetric dilation obvious dilation obvious algebraical steps I am just keeping because you are experts you know that. So, therefore, this is the definition so, that means we can say that the volumetric rate of volumetric dilation which is defined or the rate of volumetric strain also can be written as rate of volumetric strain or volumetric strain rate. So, rate of volumetric strain is simply the sum of the rate of linear strain or linear strain rates in x y z direction and this is nothing but the divergence of the well this can be expressed in terms of the because del u del x del v del y plus del div y because divergence means del del is i del del x you know again I am writing I wrote it earlier also del del y. So, this is an operator and this is the dot product that is the scalar product and v is u plus can be written like this and therefore, the scalar product that del dot v gives this thing. This is known as divergence of the velocity. So, you see the rate of volumetric strain is the sum of the rate of linear strain which equals to the divergence of the velocity vector. Okay. And for an incompressible flow which will be told afterwards by Professor Shumun Chakraborty, the rate of volumetric strain will be 0. If the rate of volumetric strain is 0 means in a flow field the fluid element does not suffer any change of volume continuously. That is continuous change in volume is not there, no volume change. This will happen when the divergence of the velocity vector is 0. That means you see the description of motion tells you about the incompressibility. That is the situation where we will consider the flow to be incompressible. This will be discussed in detail afterwards by Professor Shuman Chakraborty also. Now, after this we will consider another situation. So far we have seen that for example, if we go for a uh, well two dimensional again x y and we have defined u and v earlier we told that u is a function of x. Now, I told in most general case u is a function of x y and v is a function of x y. This is the most general case. Earlier we saw that u is a function of x, v is a function of y for which the shape remains unchanged, elements move parallelly, but there is a stretching included angle remains same. That means, there is a change in the linear dimensions which results in a change in its volume. But now, if we consider a general case that u is a function of y also along with x, v is a function of x also along with y, then what happens? Let us consider this thing. Let this is the case, this is the element a, b, c, d. Well, which has got the linear dimension delta x and delta y. Well, this is delta y. Now, you see the thing is that u is a function of x and y. u is a function of x that means all particles have a relative x component of velocity in respect to others. So, that this is a stretching of a b. Now, since v is a function of x that means the y component of velocity at all particles in the linear element a b has a different velocity which was not there earlier when v was not a function of x. Now, if we consider that all u v increases with the positive direction of x and y then we can tell that each particle along a b has a 
increased y component of velocity corresponding to a. That means, b has an opportunity to move up relatively corresponding to a. That means, this gives a situation where a b will move like this, they will not move parallel. Similar is the case for elements and a d, where we see earlier that u was not a function of y, only x, but here u is a function of y. That means, all the x component of velocity on the linear elements have different values. And if u increases with increasing y, that means, there is a increased velocity u compared to the point here, one point here compared to that point here. That means, d has a greater u velocity than a, which gives an opportunity for d to move relative to a in the x direction. That means, the line a d will move this way. That means, this line will not move parallel. So, therefore, there will be a deformation in the shape, rectangular shape. What is this? Let us see here. Let us see here. This is the now condition A dash, B dash, C dash, D dash. Well, now already we have recognized that this linear displacement of in the x direction of this linear element AB was what was already known from the displacement that earlier that a moves to a dash b moves to b dash and this displacement is more than this because u is a function of x already this is done and this is what this is del x plus del u del x into del x delta t this is already done now we are interested what is this movement what is this movement Okay. Now, what is this movement? If you see this movement, you will you can write like this that b has a velocity y component with respect to a. What is that? More than a that is nothing but for example, a velocity component is v because we are defining u v here. The velocity component at b, this is at a. At b, it is v plus del v del y del y t this is more. So, therefore, we see that a moves with a velocity v. So, this displacement is v delta t, but b moves with a. So, if we take from b this is from a this is parallel then if we take from b b dash. So, b dash to b will be different b dash to b this will be v plus what is this v? v plus sorry del v del x into del x delta t. It will be v plus del v del x into del x into delta t. Clear? Because this is moving with v. So, this will have a displacement here v delta t, but this moves with a greater v because v is a function of x. That is what v plus del v del x del x delta. I am sorry del v del x del x delta t. So, therefore, this will move from b to b dash del v, v plus del v del x del x del. So, what is this component? So, this b dash to this that means, this will be now b dash is here. Okay. B dash is here. So, this is the x projection. It can be written as b double dash. So, this b dash b double dash that means, this lift will be this distance minus this distance. Okay. That means, a b dash minus a a dash, which is equal to del v del x into del x del t. That means, b dash b double dash is this lift is, that means, this is the relative displacement in y direction of b with respect to a. Similar thing happens here. Now, first of all, let us make the y displacement already y displacement, let us that d double dash. This is already we derived this is derived already this is because of what this is because of b as a function of y so this was delta y plus del v del y delta y delta t 
then what is this? Then what is this displacement? What is this displacement? This displacement means A has moved from here to here by what amount? A has moved from here to here. If we show this, this is this is A dash. This has moved by a distance u because this is u. This velocity is u. So, u into delta t. But here the velocity is not u because now u is a function of y. That means, this has moved, the c has moved. That means, if you make a projection from c, c to d, that means, if you make this distance, try to understand this distance, that means, displacement of c to d dash, that means, this displacement is u plus del u del y into del y. That is the velocity delta t. Why? Because a has a velocity u. Now, x component of velocity, but d has a velocity u plus del u del y because u is a function of y also, del u del y delta y. So, therefore, you see because u as a function of y and v as a function of x, this has a relative displacement in x direction with respect to this, this has a relative displacement in y direction with respect to it. So, therefore, this relative displacement is u plus del u del y del y minus delta t minus u delta t that means this d double dash d dash becomes del u del y into del y delta t. Here it is difficult to write, so this I am writing as this displacement. I get it. Now, if I denote this as delta alpha and this as delta beta, my drawing is such, this is not, this is little small, oh, well, it is all right, delta alpha and delta beta. Now, we can write this tan delta alpha equals to what? B dash, B double dash divided by this, that means del V del x, del x del t, okay, divided by this one, del x I take common, 1 plus del u del x del x delta t sorry delta t del u del x uh, del x del x I have taken common that is why only delta t very good only delta t all right this is tan delta alpha similarly tan this angle delta beta can be written as so this is this perpendicular by this base here perpendicular is d dash d double dash that is del u del y. That means, the relative displacement of this with respect to A d that is del u relative displacement in x direction del y del t divided by this length A dash d double dash that is delta y if I take common. So, therefore, what is there? 1 plus this is del u del y uh, delta y plus del v del y, del v del y delta t, del v del x, del u del x. So, therefore, del u del y, del v del y. Very good. So, if this is so, now for small angular changes, if we consider a small angular changes for a small time interval delta t, this element goes here. This is the technique because we want to define at a point. So, by the method of calculus always this incremental change is very small. So, in the small changes tan alpha is tan alpha that means tan delta alpha can be written as delta alpha and tan delta beta can be written as delta beta because we know tan theta is equal to theta at small angle. So, we have delta alpha is this and delta beta is this. Now, delta x delta x may be cancelled delta y delta y may be cancelled. So, this is all right. Now, what is then delta alpha delta t if we take a limit as delta t tends to 0, then what will be the limit? Delta t will come here, then del v del x 
into 1 plus del u del x into delta t to the power minus 1 and all the higher order terms of delta t will be 0 when we take the limit. So, it will be only del v del x. Similarly, if we take limit delta v ta divided by delta t as delta t tends to 0 will be what delta t will come here delta beta by delta t that will be equal to del u del o i into 1 plus del v del o i delta t to the power minus 1. And when we take limit delta t tends to 0 all term will be tending to 0 except 1 all term will be except 1. So, this will lead to del u del o i the way this lead to del v del x. Okay, in one page I have done it so that you can see from the consistency of the diagram. So, therefore, we see that if delta alpha and delta beta are the change of angles then from this geometry what we get that limit of again I am writing delta alpha it is coming beta. Eh? bigger delta alpha by delta t as delta t tends to 0 which is defined as d alpha dt rate of change of angle d alpha dt which is, is equal to del v del x. Well, similarly the limit of delta beta delta t as delta t tends to 0 is d beta dt and which is del u del y. Now, we define the way now what is the rate of change of this included angle? The rate of change of this included angle is d alpha dt d that means delta alpha delta t plus delta beta delta t because initially the angle was this 90 degree. Finally, this is the final angle. So, change is by delta alpha and delta beta. So, the change in the angle is delta alpha plus delta beta. So, rate of change of the angle between two linear elements which were originally perpendicular to each other is given by d alpha dt plus d beta dt. So, therefore, d alpha dt plus d beta dt is given by del v del x plus del u del y and this represents the rate of change of angle between two mutually perpendicular lines elements which were mutually perpendicular in course of flow. What is the rate at which this two linear elements which were initially perpendicular is going to change? This rate of change of angle is given by that and this is defined as the rate it is expressed as epsilon dot x y this is known as rate of angular deformation, rate of angular deformation, rate of angular deformation, rate of angular deformation and this is in x y plane that is why this given suffix x y it is given as del v del x plus del u del y. So, therefore, rate of angular deformation as it is defined as the rate of change of angle included angle between two linear elements which were originally perpendicular to each other is given by del v del x plus del u del y and it is rate of angular deformation in x y plane. Similarly, if you take this x y z and you can show where we have taken the two dimensional view again in two dimensional view in another coordinate plane that is x y z with reference to x y z we can write epsilon y z that means in y z plane rate of angular deformation in y z plane becomes equal to del w del y plus del v del z it's cross differential. Similarly, in z x plane that is rate of angular deformation in z x plane is del u del z plus del w del x. This can be written in an index notation like this epsilon dot i j 
rate of angular deformation as del u j del x i plus del u i del x j. This is the angular, this is the index notation. It works like a tensor because you require two dimensions to fix. Why? This is because when you define the rota uh, this deformation in a plane, you consider two linear elements, one is along one axis, another is along another axis, the two directions which are mutually perpendicular to each other, but lying in the same plane. So, therefore, you require two indices by which it can be represented as a tensor with this index notation. Okay? So, this way we define the rate of angular deformation in different planes. Then what is the final result we get? That if u and v and w when they are functions of their respective coordinate systems x, y, z, then there is only linear strain rates, no change in the shape, included angle remains same, the faces move parallelly as we have seen earlier. Now, when we make a change that u is a function of x, y, v is a function of x, y, okay, and in case of three dimensional thing, u is a function of x, y, z, v is a function of x, y, z, w will be a function of x, y, z, then we will see this type of deformation that included angle change. Now, here I will tell you that with this at the same time we see when this there is a displacement of B, Y displacement with respect to A and X displacement of D with respect to A, these linear elements move and gives a deformation. Now, this movement of the linear element gives a sense of rotation that means as if the linear elements rotate about for example, A B rotates about A. Whenever there is a transverse displacement of B with respect to A means it is a give sense of rotation. Similarly, if there is a transverse displacement of du with respect to A, that means this way displacement, then this gives a sense of rotation of this linear element A d with respect to A. This gives a concept of rotation and if we consider this rotation as the angular velocity, angular velocity of the element A b is defined as the rate of change of angle. A similar way we can define and already we have found out this is nothing but del v del x. And similarly, the angular velocity of A d we can define as d beta d t. This is very simple the rate of change of angle with respect to time and we have already defined del u del y. But thing is that when we define a velocity, then we have to define its direction. Deformation is not the deformation, but it is the velocity some sense, some direction has to be there with the conventional sense that if we consider the anticlockwise rotation as positive as you see here that with the u increasing with x and v increasing with y, the a b moves in this direction and this is an anticlockwise where a d moves in this direction which is clockwise. So, if anticlockwise is positive, then omega dot a b is given a positive sign and this is given a negative sign. And now, I will define a rotation omega dot or sometimes we write simply omega or omega dot different book follows different thing is the arithmetic average of these two linear component angular velocities a b and a d and this is nothing but del v del x minus del u del y. Well, half of that because it is the arithmetic average bracket. Well, that means the concept is much more important. The writing is not that important. That means rotation is defined. Therefore, how do you define the rotation? This is known as rotation and this rotation again is given omega dot in the x y plane like the deformation, but since it is rotating about the z axis it is given as omega z. Again, I am writing this half del v del x. This writing is not that important because mathematics is a tool, it will come automatically if you know the physical concept. So, therefore, what is the concept? That rotation at any point defined at a point and rotation is defined, the angular deformation defined at a point as what? The rate of change of angle the two linear elements meeting at that point which were originally perpendicular to each other, how the rate of change of angle takes place. 
but the rotation defined as the arithmetic average of the angular velocities of these two elements meeting at that point which were originally perpendicular then what is the arithmetic average of their rotational velocities defined is defined as the rotation at that point with that definition of rotation we define rotation like that similarly we can define just like this deformation the rotation in x y z component three component that means we can define omega dot that is x y z we have defined x y we can define y z which is omega dot x y z component we can define that will be del w del y minus del v del z of course a half is there sometimes everybody forgets to writing half so omega dot in the z x plane which is the rotation about the axis y is z x plane z x plane this plane z x plane is del u del z minus del w del x. So, these are the rotational components omega dot x or omega dot y z omega dot y or omega dot z x and omega dot z or omega dot x y. So, in index notation we can write omega dot i j with a minus sign half del u j del x i minus del u i del x j. Now, you see the deformation index notation. So, if you express as a tensor deformation tensor is a symmetric tension because this is plus symmetric tensor whereas, this is an anti symmetric tensor. And sometimes you will see afterwards when professor Shumun Chakraborty will derive the navier stokes equation this representation we sometimes write that del u j del x i index notation the velocity gradient is written as half of these two strain rate components the deformation angular deformation rate and the rotation del u j this is simply algebra del u i del x j plus half of del u j del x i minus del u i del x j and this is what this is is deformation that is epsilon x dot y and this as a whole is what omega dot and omega dot also can be expressed in a vector form because you see that omega different components are like this different components are like this x component that means about x axis the y z plane is this the y component that is about z x plane is this and the z component that is about x y plane which we have derived from fundamentals is this. So, in consideration of this we can represent this in a vector form it can be represented as a vector also half of curl that means cross product of del with the velocity vector. What is del again <coughs> is a vector operator i del del x plus j del del y plus k del del z and the velocity vector is again i u plus j v plus k w. So, if you make this, this you will get half of if you write the curl velocity then in determinant form i j k you can write del del x del del y del del z and u v w that means if you break this curl in the component you will see that it will give you the same velocity component that omega x I am not writing again that is half or you can write is half that means if you do del w del y minus del v del z 
which is nothing but omega dot x. You understand? Half is there j that is omega dot that will give you the omega dot y. That means, here if you find this del u del z minus del w del x del u del z from here you can find out del w del x and plus k that means, this one del v del x minus del u del y that means, this is omega dot y and del v del x minus del u del y that is omega dot z. That means, this can be written in a compact vector form also like this index notation this and the vector form by this. This way you will define the rotation and this uh, volumetric strain rate. Now, I will come to a very interesting situation as a consequence of this deformation rates. What are those interesting situations? Let us see. Let us consider a case. Now, I write in x y plane with respect to this x y plane. Again, I recapitulate that epsilon dot x y, I have got the value del v del x, v is this component of velocity, u is the x component plus del u del y. Well, and I got that omega dot x y, which may be written as omega dot z, because it is about the z axis, is half del v del x minus del u del y. Well, now by intuition mathematically, I take a case where we consider del v del x just intuition is minus del u del y. Just take a case. What does it give? It gives epsilon dot x y is 0. Simply, if you put it there and omega dot x y or omega dot z del v del x is minus del u del y or del u del y is minus del v del x. So, either plus del v del x or is equal to minus they are equal del u del y. So, I see this is a condition which gives epsilon dot x y that is the rate of angular deformation 0 in the plane, but gives a finite value of the rotation. What is that condition? Let us understand. This condition is like this. Let us consider this element. Okay. Now, A, B, C, D again. Now, let us consider that del V del X is del U del Y. We consider del V, one is positive, another has to be negative with a negative sign. Let us consider del V del X positive. So, automatically del U del Y will be negative. If del V del X is positive, A, B will rotate like this and del U del Y is negative means what? That means, U velocity here is less than A in the positive direction of this u velocity is less. That means, d is moving with a lesser velocity, lesser x component of velocity than a that is del u del y is negative. In that situation, a d will not move this way, this will move this way. So, this is in moving in this way. So, this will go like that because del u del y is negative. That means, this is moving at a lower x component velocity than a. This is taken as a positive. It can be other way also, then this thing will be this way. So, now since that 2 are equal as already we have deduced that delta alpha and delta beta for a given interval of time that will be represented by this. This will be delta alpha d that means, if this is equal to this the magnitude of these two angles delta alpha delta beta will be same. That means, there will be a rotation of a b and a d in such a way they will make the initial angle 90 degree same as here. That means, included angle is same because the rate of change of angle for A B and the rate of change of angle in A D is same and in the same direction that mean maintain the included angle the same. So, this is the case which represents this mathematics and this resembles a rigid body motion, a rigid body rotation, a rigid body when rotates they do not change the shape. That means, the included angle remains the same. So, therefore, this state of fluid motion is known as rigid body rotation, where the angular deformation rate is 0. There is no angular deformation. 
but it rotates with it. Now, it is del V del x, the rotational velocity is del V del x. This is in the anti clockwise direction, the element rotates in the anti clockwise direction. Del V del x is positive, del U del y is negative, 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 positive. That means, this is the rotation. Okay, clear. Now, we come to another case, just the opposite that del V, that means we make this 0, del V del x is del U del y. Well, then what we get? Omega dot x y is omega dot z is 0. Okay. But, epsilon dot x y is not 0. Epsilon dot x y, this is this, that means either 2 del V del x or equal to 2 del u del y. That means, this is non-zero, but this is 0. What is this case? This case is this. In this case, special case that this is a rigid body rotation, angle remain unchanged where the angular deformation is 0. There is no angular deformation in a rigid body rotation, but here since del v del x equal to del u del y, since either 2 are positive and 2 are negative. If you consider 2 are positive, it is the same case which we derived earlier that considering the all positive, that means delta alpha, that means this will have a relative displacement in y direction with respect to a in the positive direction of y. Similarly, this will have a displacement, let us write a b dash c dash d dash positive direction of x, relative displacement in x with respect to a. So, therefore, this will give. So, therefore, you see clearly there is a distortion, but since delta alpha is delta beta because of this equality del v del x is del u del y, then what happens? The omega dot is 0. That means, the angular velocity of this d alpha d t and angular velocity of these are same, but in opposite direction. They cancel each other by the definition. Definition is the arithmetic average of that. That is why this equation makes this 0. Whereas, the volumetric strain rate that is del v del x plus del u del y, this is not 0, this is 2 del v del x because they are equal. So, this is a case which is no rotation. Okay, but with deformation, but with deformation, but with deformation, but with. So, this is a special case, there is no rotation, but with deformation. Okay, these two special cases, now I discuss. Now, as a consequence of this, I tell you, when there is no rotation, the angular velocity in all directions, all planes, that means omega vector as you represented as half of curl of the velocity vector has to be 0. That means, all the omega component, omega x is equal to omega dot y is equal to omega dot z about the axis. That means, it is in y z plane, it is in x z plane and it is in x y plane, all have to be 0. Then the flow is known as irrotational. That means, there is no rotation. The definition of rotation I have told, this is known as ir. So, the birth of the definition of the irrotational flow comes here. When there will be no rotation of the fluid element at each point. All components of rotation will be 0. Then the fluid is known as irrotational and the rotation is defined by half curl of the velocity vector is 0. That means, the rotation will not be there. The fluid element will not have rotation. The velocity field will be such that rotation will be 0. As I told in two dimension as a special case, the rotation will be 0 when del V del x equal to del V del y. Now, this is known as irrotational flow. And if half of curl of velocity vector is 0, velocity vector can be expressed as a gradient of a potential function. Why? Because we know from our vector algebra that our vector calculus, whatever you there is a curl of the gradient of a scalar quantity, let it is phi, is always 0. The gradient of a scalar quantity, if you take a scalar quantity, and the gradient of the scalar quantity, the cross product of this with del, del operator I have told so many times is always 0. So, if you compare, this is a vector relation. So, if you compare with that, then we can tell that V can therefore, be expressed as the 
gradient of a scalar function and when a vector is expressed as a gradient of a scalar function here it is v this field is known as conservative field okay where the velocity is derived from the gradient of a scalar function and the velocity field is known as conservative velocity field and this we can write then in the scalar form that u v w in the three form that if we have v is decomposed as v plus k w in x y z coordinate system x y z coordinate system u v w then this can be written as the respective gradient del phi del x v is del phi del y and this is the potential function and this potential function is sometimes known as velocity potential this is the potential function the gradient of which defines the velocity vector the gradient with respect to x defines the x component y component z component now this is the definition in some books it is followed that with the in analogy with the common phenomenological eco, uh, uh, common phenomenological equation that or common phenomenology that flux is always associated with a negative potential gradient sometimes some book also define with minus doesn't matter if this is so then curl of the velocity vector has to be zero because velocity is the gradient of a scalar function and therefore an irrotational flow yields to a conservative velocity field where velocity can be expressed as the gradient of a scalar function known as potential function for which the irrotational flow is also known as potential flow i will stop here about this because this potential flow will be dealt in more details by professor shuman chakraborty but you see this e rotationality is a consequence of fluid kinematics where the all rotational components are zero okay and in that case velocity can be derived from the gradient of a scalar function which is known as velocity potential function and velocity behaves like a conservative field thank you up to this is the kinematics of uh, flow then of course okay i Uh, sorry time is there now i will tell yes yes very important thing i'm sorry i forgot vorticity oh very good vorticity now vorticity the birth of its definition it is defined here the vorticity is defined as for example if i do it in the vector form it is twice the rotation so therefore vorticity in xy plane will be del v del x minus del u del y so therefore we see in an irrotational flow or potential flow just i told earlier in an irrotational flow or potential flow the vorticity is zero because it is simply the twice of the angular velocity this is known as vorticity but vorticity again is a consequence of the fluid kinematics by its definition okay i will not go any further as i have told that irrotational flow the flow velocity field is conservative velocity field can be derived from a scalar gradient of a scalar function and therefore the vorticity is twice the rotation that means in an irrotational flow vorticity is zero potential flow vorticity is zero this is just the definition of vorticity but vorticity is physical concept is much more intense vorticity is transported it is diffused okay so the vorticity dynamics the generation of vorticity vorticity transport how it is diffused like the diffusion of momentum it has a molecular diffusion phenomena all these things will be dealt in detail by professor shuman chakraborty and which is a very interesting feature in the fluid flow but this is by definition is the vorticity and this arises from the rotation if vorticity is non zero that means there has to be a rotation so therefore whenever there is a rotation in a flow field the vorticity arises and this rotation in a flow field arises from different causes not that there is a rotational flow imposed on it which has a tangential component of velocity because of flow reversal there are many situations where flow reversal takes place one of such situations is boundary layer separation all these things will be dealt in detail again by other teachers so under different situations the vorticities are generated by the rotations created in the flow field and the vorticity dynamics is a very important part of the fluid mechanics but nevertheless the birth of the vorticity comes from the condition of irrotationality which is a direct consequence of the kinematics of flow okay thank you
अच्छा यू टेक क्वेश्चन ओके वन थ्री थ्री सिक्स प्लीज यस आई कैन नॉट हियर यू that you that i told earlier you have to think that in a, at steady state if you consider a straight line i just explain that that means at each and every point the velocity remains the same it does not change with time so if you follow the particle the another particle when it will follow it will follow the same trajectory so therefore the end lo, foot of the all particles will coincide with their locus itself that i explained earlier also so path line and stream line they have got no difference if you plot the path lines cannot intersect for example can path line intersect at steady state because at steady state path line cannot intersect because the velocity is same at all point of time so therefore if two path line intersect whatever may be the time taken by the two particles when they come at the same point it will have the same velocity so therefore here i example that straight line path line stream line see that that a particle passing through this point has some velocity it takes for example the particle p1 i told a now the next particle comes will take the same velocity it will follow the same line whenever it arrives here it will follow the same velocity so ultimately the points will be guided by the velocity which is same at all points at all time so all particles passing through that will be guided by the same velocity and will follow the same trajectory that means this will imply the path lines of all particles crossing to this point and at the same time this will imply the straight line and at the same time this will imply a streamline through this point streamline through this point because at each and every inter at point this is the velocity vector and which does not change with time okay and this understanding i am telling you again and again whatever teacher tells you yourself has to think by putting these definitions side by side path line straight line and streamline and this diagram that why under steady state these three things become steady i become same next 1 okay. uh. uh, to 3 7 okay please hello yes yes please tell two streamlines can never intersect each other streamlines are specified at a given interval of time i uh, sorry at an instant of time sorry at particular instant that if you show a series of streamlines at a particular instant you have to fix the instant that t is equal to 5 second for example these are the series of streamline now if two streamlines intersect at point then at the same time interval there will be two velocity vectors at that point okay so at a given instant at a given point there will be only unique velocity vector this can there cannot be two velocity vectors so they cannot intersect okay okay take it hello hello please yes hello sir yes, uh, yes. you have explained total acceleration to your kolkata and jamshedpur example with rain ah yes 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 that was really fantastic and cleared our concept with respect to total acceleration but uh, with such type of example can you explain the steady uh, state in which steam line path line and straight line are uh, equal <laughs> the similar okay. yes this is a Uh, example which i usually give in my class i am given for a long time but streamline path line and straight lines i am telling you this type of example is very difficult to give you but i tell you uh, the concept like this lagrangian approach and eulerian approach merge when the things are steady that means when the things are steady nothing changes with time you understand all the velocity fields if you think from eulerian approach first all the velocity fields are frozen with space coordinates that means it is defined with space that means if you have a velocity mapping with space that mapping is fixed for any time you understand this so it is fixed 
Now, if you try to find out the trajectory of a particle, now in a trajectory of a particle you find the particle will take some time from reach to one point to other point. Now, when we reach other point, it will assume the velocity at that point which was existing for all times. You understand? So, therefore, it will move accordingly and see this way it will come to different points and it will assume the velocity at those points which were already there for all times. That means, this trajectory the tangent to the trajectory you will be giving the velocity vector try to understand velocity vector. So, what happens in case of unsteady flow the path line tangent gives still the velocity vector, but one point tangent gives the velocity vector the other point tangent gives the velocity vector at some other point time because time has elapsed for the particle to travel from one point to other point. But in streamline when you show the velocity vector at one location and at another location this is for a particular time because streamline is specified with time that is the difference between path line and streamline. But when you frozen the time nothing changes with time things two things become same. If you think that way I think it will be more clear for you to understand a path line if you draw and if you see sir for example, if you draw a path line and if you see that this is the velocity vector obviously a locus of a point this is the velocity vector at this point point 1 and this is the velocity vector at point 2, but this velocity at point 2 and this velocity at point 1 this velocity that v 1 v 2 they are at different instant of time. So, at point 2 the velocity at that instant t 1 was different because it had taken some time at t 2 it has reached, but when the steady state is there this 2 this velocity v 2 will not change with time. So, therefore, whatever is the velocity vector given here it is independent of the time. So, this can be taken as for any time the series of streamlines because the streamlines at different instant of time will be same under steady flow ok. So, this uh, thing you have to Thank think carefully ok ok. Now, Please. RT one three zero three. Please tell. Not audible. 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 Please. We cannot hear you. Oh, oh, we cannot hear you. At the end of the day, I will come to you again. Okay, please. Next question. 1192. 1192. 1192. RCT, no? RCID 1192. RCID. What is RCID? Oh, remote sense. Uh, no question. No question. Okay. Remote sensing. Remote center. Center. Okay. Please. RCID one three one six. If you have any question, please. Please go ahead. Uh, please. We are not getting your audio. We are not getting your audio. Please, Mike. Uh, so Hello. Uh, yes. Hello. Please, yeah. please. Yes. Uh. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, please, good afternoon. Go yes. Am I audible? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Audible. Hello. Yeah. Audible. Okay. Audible. Sir, uh, before just you discuss about rigid model motion. Yes. That you showed that del v by del x is positive will rotate like this. But suppose that del v by del x is negative, then how it will rotate, sir? Why I do not un understand your question. When del v del x is sir, equal to minus del u del y. Del x is positive and del u by del v is negative. Then you showed the diagram it will rotate like this. But and suppose in case I will take that del v by del x is negative, is it, will rotate the yes, yes, this is very this is this is very simple. This is very simple. You take yes, that is very simple, that is in the opposite direction. I told again I am telling you. This is very simple. This is A B C D. Now del v del x is minus del u del y. I first take del v del x is positive then a b u will be like this yes. that you understand and del u del y will negative yeah. means a d u will be like this you understand. But when I take del v del x negative 
then what will happen? Del V del x negative, I tell you again that del V del x negative, that means in that case, this ve velocity y component of velocity b, b at point b is less than a, that means this will then go like this, whereas this is del u del y is positive, so this will go like this, so and this so will be, to be uh, and this is same, but these angles will be same, so that in this case, it rotated in anti-clockwise, it will be rotated in clockwise direction and this will maintain the rigid body rotation because the included so angle will, angle will, will remain the same, yes, and that doesn't matter, the included angle will remain the same, okay. Yes, yes, yes. If okay. you take del V del X positive, del U del Y negative, it will rotate in this direction and if you take del V del X negative okay. and del U del Y positive, it will rotate in this direction, oh, you understand? Okay. Clockwise or anti clockwise? Clockwise or anti clockwise, that will change. Okay, okay, okay. thank you. Okay. okay. Another question? Take letter. Okay, please. Any other question? You are not audible. Is it audible? Yes, audible, yes. Hello. Hello, please, uh, audible. Sir, uh, could you, uh, sir, could you please uh, brief about the substantial acceleration, please? Substantial acceleration, as we have told that it is the total, it is the component temporal plus convective acceleration. Substantial acceleration, you can understand it better this way. I example that uh, raining from Kolkata to Jamshedpur. Now, mathematically, this is substantial acceleration, which composed of temporal acceleration plus convective acceleration. Now, I tell you this way, from mathematics, understanding will not be clear. I am telling you physically what it is. Now, substantial, let me see his face. The substantial acceleration is that, that in a flowing fluid, if a particle has to flow from one point to other point, whether it suffers a change in velocity or not, think in that way. If it changes the velocity for a given interval of time, then you simply consider the acceleration at that change of velocity divided by interval of time. Now, this is the acceleration and this is the substantial acceleration. This composed of two parts. Now, think one way that a particle moving in a convergent duct, we track a particle. Now, in a convergent duct, the velocity increases, for example, the velocity in the axial direction as I told in the direction of flow increases as we move because the duct is converging the acceleration taking place that probably all of you know Professor Shuman Chakravarti will explain it again in the continuity equation. So, what happens but at any point velocity does not change with time. So, when it moves from one point to other point it suffers an acceleration though velocity is not changing with time it is a steady flow. It is very peculiar that flow is not changing with time but still we get acceleration why? how time comes that the particle moves from one position to other position and suffers a change in velocity because of the distribution with the position, but the particle takes some time to reach that position. So, particle takes some time. So, for particle for this change in velocity has to wait for some time for which he has an acceleration and this acceleration is purely the convective acceleration and along with that if the flow velocity also changes try to understand then what happens? This change in velocity that is encountered by this particle during its travel is not because of the spatial distribution that velocity increases because of the converging section, but at the same time velocity is also changing with the time. So, summation of this superimpose that change with the space coordinate plus change with the time makes the acceleration. It may so happen, I am telling you can guess from your common sense if these two things are countering that velocity increases with the space coordinates in the direction of flow and at the same time velocity decreases with time and it is adjusted in such a way that the particle takes some time to reach there so that the velocity increase due to the distribution in space coordinates is counterbalanced by the reduction because of the fact that velocity is decreasing with time then in that case substantial acceleration may be 0. Try to understand it is composed of both convective and the temporal. It is clear? Clear? Huh? It will be clear. 
हेलो यस हेलो 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 सर यस यस हेलो हेलो यस प्लीज टेल हेलो यस प्रोसीड प्रोसीड सुकुमार तुम ये बार बोलो हेलो सर इंफ्लुएंस मैकेनिक्स हेलो यस यस चलाइए बच्चे यस यस प्लीज प्रोसीड विथ योर क्वेश्चन हेलो प्रोसीड योर क्वेश्चन विथ योर क्वेश्चन हेलो हेलो and in steady state there is no difference between oilarian and lagrangian yes 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 oh lagrangian sir yes oh chhere dao ei suna jacche na audible na oilarian approach and lagrangian approach in steady state Hello, become same so there is no point of discriminating between oilarian and lagrangian approach in unsteady phenomena it is easier to handle with oilarian Hello, approach in film mechanics of oh. Now what about you? Get it down. Letter. Letter. Listen, they are not going to answer. Answer one zero seven five. Bulwal question. Got it. It is not audible. Please, not audible. Not audible. Not audible. Please. Not audible. You are not audible. I will come to later. Not audible. Not audible. Dekhanaj. I said you one three three eight. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes, yes. Sir, my question is like streamline and path line. Is there any equation for straight line? Straight line. Yes, there is an equation. I don't know whether you will get time in tutorial. We will do it. Yes, there is an equation for straight line. There is an equation for straight line. A possible tutorial you can. Yes, there is definitely an equation for straight line. Yes. There will be a parameter introduced in this straight line, which is that fixed point through which the fluid of different identity. Passes through. Who will possibly, if but possible? Steady, steady. Uh, but 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 for steady state, straight line, path line, streamlines are same. But if possible, we can discuss some problem. Okay. Sir, what is the physical significance of what is it? Physical significance of what is it? I told, but it will be at the at this stage in the kinematics. I tell you, the physical significance is like that. What is it? Is something which is related to rotation because vorticity at its very first place is defined as twice the rotation so the physical significance is as similar as rotation that means it is the rotation in a fluid flow full fluid as the way rotation is defined that is the vorticity so vorticity physical significance means is a creation of rotation in a flow field as i told already in the class the rotation may be caused by several effects in the flow you understand several effects in the flow which may be by imposition of rotational motion in the flow which may be because of the flow reversals under certain situations like boundary layer separations like flow through certain expansion so there are local flow separations because under several cases such vorticities are generated when the boundary layer separation takes place when the flow situation such they create an adverse pressure gradient for flow separation but from kinematic point of view you don't have to think over this whenever there is a rotational uh, Uh, motion is the, the rotation is there not rotational motion i will tell the rotation by definition that rotation itself defines the vorticity so physical concept of rotation is physical concept of vorticity but vorticity is some parameter i told you earlier also which is transported which is diffused molecular diffusion is there which is again generated all these things mixed up makes the vorticity dynamics 
the conservation equation of what is it which are very important may be dealt in details by professor shuman chakravarti but from kinematic consideration vorticity is defined from the rotation e rotation uh, from the rotationality that means rotate definition of rotation which is a direct consequence of the kinematics of flow then what is it the physical explanation is the rotation rotation any rotation in the fluid element is is vorticity but there are many other things how to specify the vorticity circulation is there uh, associated to it, it all these things i don't want to bring it here this will unnecessarily complicate you start with this from the kinematics that vorticity is defined as twice the rotation curl of the velocity vector that means it say it gives a sense of the rotation okay one more question one more question RCID 1270. Oh, is there a copy? RCID 1270. 1270, yes. RCID 1270. You are not audible. You are not audible. You are not audible. You are not audible. I will come to later. We will come later to you. You are not audible. Any other? RCID one one two one. RCID one two one. One one two one. Oh one one two one. One, one, two, one. RCID 1121. Is it audible? Yeah, now, Jato Yeah, good afternoon. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, audible. Hello? Yes, yes, audible. Please Hello? tell, please tell, audible. Am I audible? Yes, yes. My question is regarding the flow net. Uh, we do not have a velocity potential function in a rotational flow. E rotational so, flow. Uh, we do not have velocity potential function in a rotational flow. Mm, yes. So, sir, how we will have the flow net in a rotational flow? There is no flow net in a rotational flow. What is flow net? Flow net? What is flow net? I do not understand what do you mean by that. If you mean the flow net by the uh, velocity potential, velocity potential function lines in a rotational flow, yeah, yeah, there the is how we will have the flow net in a rotational flow. Listen, listen. In a rotational flow, there is no flow net with the velocity potential functions. This is the answer to your question. Velocity potential function exists only the flow is irrotational. If the curl of the velocity vector is zero, I told you repeatedly that the velocity potential function exists in a irrotational flow. So, therefore, no flow net can be made or can be constructed by velocity potential line because that does not exist in a rotational flow. Okay. With this, I conclude. Okay. We will be back after lunch at what time? 2 o'clock. And Professor Shuman Chakravarti, just before I conclude, I tell you uh, the beginning of the Professor Shuman Chakravarti, what he will talk. He will discuss about the continuity equation because as I end here, I must tell that the conservation of mass principle should be explored from the kinematic possibility that whether a kinematic description of the fluid motion that is description of the fluid motion satisfies the conservation of mass or not that will be discussed by Professor Shuman Chakravarti in the discussion of continuity equations that we have to explore whether a kinematic condition gives the possibility of conservation of mass and can define a physically possible flow that will be described by Professor Shuman Chakravarti after lunch. Thank you.